jumping in a cold plunge or taking a cold shower has been gaining recent popularity due to its sought after health benefits both physically and mentally. But is it really worth it? The stressful buildup to get into the ice cold tub or turn the shower knob in the opposite direction of what you usually do? I decided to try it out myself, specifically the shower part, because it is a lot less work to just turn the shower knob than buy a cold plunge or fill your bath with ice. The first few times I took a warm shower and turned it cold at the end starting with five seconds before I jumped out desperate to grab my warm towel. The more I did it, the longer I increased the time I would stay under the cold water. 10 seconds, 15, 20. I worked my way up to a minute. By the time I was here, the cold water wasn't so bad. The stress of turning the knob wasn't so bad either. It got to a point where it was a habit and it just felt like routine. This is one of the main benefits I noticed. This mental discipline that these experiences can give you. You start by being petrified to do it, but after forcing yourself day after day, it becomes like clockwork. For me personally, this is probably the best thing I have gained from taking cold showers, simply the mental discipline it brings. But like I said earlier, people have talked about reaping the physical benefits too. For me, not much happened. And quite honestly, the physical effects people praise may simply just be placebo. For me, the one thing I noticed was healthier hair. After taking a hot shower, it will open the pores on your scalp, and these take a while to close leaving your hair vulnerable and susceptible to damage. Switching to cold water will close these pores and protect your hair, leading to less damaged and frizzy hair. But other than that, I didn't notice much else. But what does the science and facts tell us? Well, for one, cold exposure may boost our immunity. The shock your body feels after entering cold water stimulates leukocytes which are essentially blood cells that fight infection. There was interesting data found supporting this idea, stating that in the Netherlands, people who switched to cold water called out of work for sick days 29% less than those who didn't. Another big one is improved circulation. When your body is hot, it will send lots of blood flow circulating around the body to keep your internal organs at a regulated temperature. But when you are cold, your body sends the blood back inside your organs to keep them warm and protect them, neglecting parts of your body like your limbs as a mechanism of survivability. When you switch to cold water, this simulates an environment where your body thinks that it is in danger of the severe cold, sending blood inside to the organs, which in turn stimulates blood flow. This same idea applies to another cold exposure benefit being reduced inflammation. As the blood flows back to your organs, it becomes more nutrient rich naturally. And when your body heats again, it sends it out to the rest of your body once more, but this time a more oxygen and nutrient rich blood. This helps flush inflammation and can often relieve pain, which is why athletes will sometimes take cold plunges after a hard day of training. But with upsides always comes downsides, right? Some studies have shown that cold exposure can actually worsen muscle hypertrophy. And this is because there are negative changes in protein synthesis. So if your goal is to build muscle and you think cold exposure will help your recovery, you are half correct. It will help by reducing inflammation but will also worsen your muscle hypertrophy simultaneously. Sudden cold exposure can also pose threats to cardiovascular health, mainly the sudden shock causing a heart attack. This is rare, but just be aware of this, and if you do decide to take a cold shower or do a cold plunge, start small and work your way up, either using time or temperature. Based on the science, the pros of cold exposure outweighs the cons. Ultimately, the choice is yours though, and taking a warm shower has its own benefits as well. Decide your overall goals for your health and make the best possible decision for you. If you decide to take the cold route, maybe consider only doing it a couple times a week to gain the pros, but also to limit the cons. Let me know if any of you guys have tried cold exposure and your personal experience with it. Thank you guys for watching.